Yeah, so I was just watching an old video of mine on my channel um, called Quick Tut Drawing a Grid, just because I was, you know, curious, just looking back at some old videos that I made a long time ago, back when I used to make, you know, game maker tutorials. And I realized that that's the f stupid way of doing it. So here I am again today, coming back at you with another quick tutorial on how to draw a grid, but this time I'm going to do it like a person with a brain. And that's not to say that when you're starting out and you don't know how to do things that you don't have a brain. It's just that your brain isn't as brainy as what your brain will be after doing things better. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. We're going to learn how to do things better. So here we f go. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started. This time we're in Game Maker Studio 2. I've gone ahead and created a new project. Um, added a room. Well, actually, the project starts with a room. Um, it's just an empty room. And I went and also pre-wrote the script so that I can just walk you through it instead of typing it all out and avoid at least some of the keyboard noise that you'll hear in a little bit, I'm sure. So let's look into the script to start with. So this is the entire script. It's not very big um, and it, it does the entire job basically. So we've got a few arguments here, preset, ready to go. Um, and let's walk through those to start with. Okay, so X1 and Y1 correspond to the top left of the grid that will be the starting position. And then X2 and Y2 correspond to the bottom right of the grid. If you've ever drawn a rectangle in Game Maker before, you'll know what's going on here. Basically, you define two points, and it draws a big rectangle between those two points, and that is basically the basis or the outline of the grid that we'll be drawing. You then have GW and GH, uh, which stand for grid width and grid height, or you could also call it cell width and cell height, but basically they are what they sound like. It's the width and the height of each cell within the grid. Um, and then we also finally have the line width, or I've named it line thickness up the top here. It's basically just how many pixels will be um, in each line of the grid. Um, and then finally, and I know I already said finally, but finally again, we have XX and YY. And we're just setting those to X1 and Y1 because we're going to increment these variables as we draw the lines of the grid. Okay, so now we're ready to kind of get into actually drawing the grid, more or less. So first step we need to make is to increment XX and YY by one. And the reason we do this is because we don't want to draw unnecessary lines. We'll actually be drawing the border of the grid at the end. So drawing this first horizontal and vertical line is kind of just a waste. So we increment it by one, so we're not wasting any time there. That puts us at the end of the first cell so that the border defines the start and this first set of lines will define the end of that first cell. So in the last video, I kind of did everything all at once and there seemed to be a fair bit of wastage. And doing it that way in regards to just drawing lines on top of each other until the entire grid was filled out. We're not doing that this time. This is going to be faster and better. So we're starting with horizontal lines. So, um, and I have actually just realized I've labeled these incorrectly. These here are the vertical lines. These are the horizontal lines. So let's just uh, fix that up right now, as well as the spelling of the word vertical, apparently. Okay, so let's get back to it with the new knowledge that this is in fact the vertical lines and these are the horizontal lines. Basically we're drawing from top to bottom in the horizontal direction. I guess in, in a way you could say either horizontal or vertical, uh, but let's not get caught up in the details. The, these are the vertical lines, but we're drawing them from the left to the right. Vertical lines, I hope this is making sense. Okay, so yeah, while the start, like while the current line position is lower than the end of the grid, we're gonna draw a line. And that line is from XX, which is like the current line position in the horizontal plane uh, from the top of the grid. So Y1, uh, and then to the bottom of the grid. So the horizontal position of the points of the line, so you've got the start of the line, and the end of the line. The horizontal position is the same because we want to draw a perfectly straight line 
but the Y is different. So you've got the top of the grid and the bottom of the grid. Um, and then this is just the line width or the thickness of the line that we're drawing now. Um, after drawing that line, we increment XX, which is again, the current position, um, by GW or G width, uh, sorry, or grid width. Um, and that way we are moving on across the grid, getting ready to draw the next line. Now, because this is a while loop, uh, this is going to repeat until XX is either equal to or higher than X2. So basically until the current horizontal drawing position becomes equal to or higher than the final width of the grid. So what this is going to end up doing is just drawing a bunch of vertical lines across the entire width of the grid, which is exactly what we want. That's going to define the left and right sides of each cell until it gets to the end. Um, and then the horizontal lines are effectively the exact same thing, but we're drawing horizontal lines instead of vertical lines. So in this case, we're checking to see if YY, and it says room height here, um, which is incorrect. So I'm gonna fix that up now too. That should in fact say Y2. Let's fix that, okay, cool. Okay, so in this case, we're going to be drawing horizontal lines from the top to bottom of the grid. So instead of checking to see if our current horizontal position is lower than the width of the grid, we're checking to see if our current vertical position is lower than the height of the grid. And then we again draw lines. You can see it's effectively the same thing, but reversed. Uh, we're drawing it from X1, so the left side of the grid, uh, to X2, the right side of the grid. And then the vertical position of the these lines is just YY, because again, we want a perfectly straight horizontal line, just in the correct vertical position as we move down the grid. Um, and again, we have the line width. Um, and then in instead of incrementing XX, or the horizontal position, we're incrementing YY, the vertical position of the current line, and we're just adding the height of the grid or the height of the cell. So eventually this variable will become equal to or higher than Y2 or the height of the grid and this loop will end. And then finally we, like this here says, finish up with a lovely border. So we just have to draw four more lines to define the outline of the grid. So we've got the top line, the bottom line, the left line and the right line. And we're literally just drawing lines with the defined width from the top left uh, to the, I always have trouble deciphering these on the fly. So we're going top left to top right. Um, then we've got bottom left to bottom right, um, top left to uh, bottom left, and the top right to the bottom right. And that gives us the four lines we need to create a border around the grid cells that we just drew. Um, and that's really the end of the script. That's all there is to it. So finally, all we need to do is get this script to run. Uh, and to do that, we just create a new object. I'm not gonna bother changing the name and we can add a draw event. And then we just type the name of the script, which in this case is draw grid. And then we just have to enter the arguments to define how this grid should display. So I'm just gonna go from the top left of the room all the way to the bottom right of the room, which means that X1 is zero, Y1 is zero, uh, X2 is room width. Now I'm gonna subtract one from this because if we set it to actually room width, the right side of the border will be just outside of the room out of view. So I'm subtracting one to just bring in the border, a single pixel. Um, and then the bottom will be room height minus one. Okay, then the cell width and height, I'm going to go with a cheeky 64. So that's 64 pixels across and 64 pixels down. And finally, the line thickness, I'm just going to leave that at one. Okay, so now with that in the draw event of this object, we just have to put the object in the room and run the game. So I'll just drop it anywhere and then hit play. 
And there we have it. A lovely grid with 64 by 64 pixels and a border around the outside. So again, just to go over this, I'm going to bring up the script. So with that script on the left, I'm just going to kind of reiterate what we did. So we started by drawing the vertical lines. That's the lines going from the top to the bottom. Um, so XX started at the first X position, which is in this case is zero, or the left side of the screen. We then incremented by one with the grid, grid height. So that's 64 pixels across. So we ended up right here where this first line is. And this is actually the first line we drew because we did that incrementation before we actually started drawing anything. Okay, so at this stage, XX, which is the position that we're drawing at currently in a horizontal direction, is lower than X2, which is the very far right side of the screen based on the arguments that we entered. Um, so we draw a line, which is this first line here. And then after drawing a line, we increment XX by the grid width, which is another 64 pixels, so we end up here at the second line, and then we just rinse and repeat. So we've incremented, draw a line, incremented again, draw another line, incremented again, draw another line, and so on across the grid, until eventually XX, which is the position of each of these vertical lines, got to the end, and it became equal to the width of the grid, at which point it did not draw another line. Now if you were to enter an uneven value for these cells, it still wouldn't draw outside of the range of the grid, but you would end up with some uneven cells on the outside, but you know, that's fine. Um, and then the horizontal lines, the ones going from left to right, did the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction. So we started with YY at zero, but then we incremented it once by the height to put us at 64 pixels down. We then drew a line and we moved down 64 again and drew another line until eventually that value two became equal to Y2 or the height of the grid, or in this case also room height minus one. Um, and then finally we drew the outside of the grid, our borders, because that nicely defines the grid. And if we don't do the borders separately and you do enter an uneven value for the grid, then you'll end up with lines coming outside of the final horizontal line. So it's better to just draw the border after the fact. And that really is all there is to it. Um, I don't know if this video actually ended up being better than the previous one, but I know this code is better. Another major benefit of the, doing it this way is if we want to change the color of this grid, all we have to do is write draw set color. And let's draw it in a nice eye piercing lime. So I'll go with C lime. And then always set your color back to the default afterwards. So we'll run that function again and set it back to C white. So in this case, we're setting our draw color to C lime. Then we run the draw grid code. And then we set it back to white afterwards. So if we run that, we now have an eye piercing lime grid. Um, and you could even change the alpha of this if you wanted to by just writing draw set alpha, etc. Basically, because we're using standard draw functions and at no point do we adjust anything like alpha or color, anything that you adjust prior to running the draw grid script will affect the grid that you draw. Um, and it's just a better way of doing things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this remake of a previous quick tutorial. This one might have actually ended up a little bit longer, but the code's better. So use this one. I'm going to keep the previous one up um, as a reference. I'll probably link to this one in the description of that one or something. But yeah, this code is better. It's more up to date. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you around.